So let's look at the effects of sterics, those electron clouds, and more than one substituent. So let's say you were adding a, a group to here. We're, let's say we're adding a nitro group. These are ortho pair directors, methyl, and in this case, the tert butyl. These will direct toward, of course, the ortho and the para. Uh, in this case, since it's a smaller substituent, the ortho would be favored over the para. Because you have more ortho positions. This is the ortho, that's the ortho. And that's the para. However, look how this is a larger substituent. Then the pair would actually have a larger percentage of, or it would predominate the pair position. And that's due to sterics. The larger group uh, can again uh, interact with the electron cloud of the NO2 causing repulsions. And then of course that would not um, make it a, a stable molecule. So the para is far away, it's far away. The, par the para position is far away from the large group. And that's what would happen in this case. So we we'll say due to sterics. Very well. The next thing is, what if you have two directing, well, you have two groups on the benzene ring. So it says here, when the directing effects of two or more substituents conflict, the one that is strongly activating, an ortho pair directing determines the orientation of the substituent. So if you look at your sheet from here, and I'll make it very easy for you, The, the higher the substituent is on this list, okay, the, this one is going to determine where this new group is going to go. So if you have, let's say, something in strongly activating, even moderately activating compared to strongly deactivating, then the ones on the top are going to win. The ortho pair is always going to win over the meta directing. So let's take a look at these. If you consult that sheet, that's an OCH3. It has a lone pair. And of course, that's a an electron withdrawing group. So this is a an electron donating group. This is a an electron withdrawing group. Strong, both are strong. So let's check them out on that list. OR is right there. That's your OCH3. So it is strongly activating. And of course, here's your NO2. Strongly deactivating. So who would win? The strongly activating. Okay, so that means that you're going to add to the ortho and the para in relation to the strongly deactivating group. So you can't so again, this is ortho to the OCH3, the methoxy group. This is para in relation to the OCH3. Now be careful, do not place anything in between because of sterics. So sterics prevent this ortho position. Because guess what? It's going to be now between two groups, and that's just going to be 
too much repulsions. So we know this reaction gives us a adds the SO3H. So we draw the ortho and the para. in relation to the OCH3. So let's draw the ortho. Here it is. Make sure the attachment is always carbon to the S. So you can't put SO3H and then the carbon. And then, so that's your ortho. And then your para would be right here. 